Hello ladies and gents, what's going on? I'm your host, The One and Only, and today we'll be taking a look at the all-new Mac Mini, now featuring the impressive and mighty M2 chip. This is the successor chip to the now infamous M1 chip, which arguably revolutionized the computer chip industry and set the bar extremely high for competitors. The M1 chip was already plenty fast and wildly acclaimed for the vast majority of users, and now it's gotten even better. This is Apple's tiniest Mac, and one of its new highlight features is a price reduction, believe it or not. But is it worth the upgrade if you're already coming from an existing M1 Mac Mini? We're going to answer that question plus more, but but before we begin, I did release a video recently on my entire Mac Mini setup. It's a minimalistic and simple setup, but it's exactly what I require for my needs. If you want to check that video out, I'll attach a card at the top right and make sure to check out this video's description for affiliate links on some fire sales and discounts on all the peripherals and accessories I use for my Mac Mini. Alright, now that the introductions are out of the way, let's head over to a quick unboxing of Apple's cheapest entry into the Mac realm. You ready? Let's get right into it. All right, all right, folks, here we have it, our Mac Mini in this white squarish box that follows the design language of the Mac Mini itself. Front and center, we have an aerial shot of the Mac Mini with the inset polished Apple logo front and center. And sadly, we only feature the Mac Mini in one color, which is silver, but would have been cool for Apple to offer a space gray version like they used to in the past. We feature nothing on the left and right hand sides, but have Mac Mini branding on the top and bottom. And then upon flipping the box to its reverse side, we have an indication as to our configuration, which for this review is a baseline model with a 256 gigabyte SSD. For the Mac Mini, we have two green pull tabs that aid in an easy unboxing, so let's remove those, open the lid, and the first thing we're greeted with is our shiny new Mac Mini in that awesome recycled aluminum that feels cold to the touch. Let's set that off to the side for now and see what else we get inside. First, we see our literature packet titled Designed by Apple in California. And inside this envelope, we have our warranty and information guide, a quick start guide, and one singular enlarged Apple sticker that is actually silver and not white. Then underneath that is our power cord. Thankfully with the Mini, our power supply is found within the chassis and we don't get a bulky power brick. That's actually all we do get inside, so do know Apple does not supply us with a USB-C cable nor an HDMI cable. You must buy those separately. So now, let's head back to the star of the show and for the Mac Mini, you'll want to peel off the protective plastic on the bottom that protects the Ray circular base, as well as remove the black plastic that protects your I.O. ports, and once you do, you're ready to hook up your Mac Mini and commence setup. So now, now, let's go over pricing and availability because I truly feel Apple has outdone themselves with the Mac Mini M2, providing insane value all while realistically only expanding on what made the M1 Mac Mini so great in the first place. Apple now has chopped off a hundred bucks from the base starting model, now coming in at only $599 or $499 for students. That base model, which is the one we have here, gets you a 256GB SSD the improved M2 chip that features an 8-core CPU, a 10-core GPU, and comes equipped with 8GB of unified RAM. The baseline M2 model can be configured to have up to a pretty sizable 2TB SSD, and you can increase your unified memory from 8GB to 24GB, and you also have the option on all Mac Mini models to upgrade to a 10 gigabit Ethernet port option for those needing speedy and fast internet speeds. The real story comes from the option that comes equipped with the M2 Pro chip though. This is the Mac to get for individuals who already have all the peripherals needed. I'm talking a display mouse and keyboard of your choice but who also require the most power possible in such a small package all while not breaking the bank the baseline model with the m2 pro chip starts at 1299 and for that price you get the m2 pro chip with a 10 core cpu a 16 core gpu 16 gigabytes of unified memory and finally a more generous 512 gigabyte ssd however you have the option to max this out to a 12 core CPU and 19 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the option to go all the way up to a massive 8 terabyte SSD. This configuration though will cost you a pretty penny as it'll set you back $4,399. Pretty crazy, but one cannot deny that the M2 Pro will provide insane performance for the majority of demanding tasks you'll ever need to throw at it. 
I do plan on picking up an M2 Pro model to compare versus the standard M2, so if you want to see that comparison video, make sure to stay tuned by clicking the subscribe button down below and enabling notifications so that you'll be notified whenever that video does drop. But inevitably, most people will gravitate towards the standard M2 chip model, so for this review, we'll focus more on the baseline model and trying to decipher whether it's a good deal or not. Externally, this new M2 equipped Mac Mini is basically identical to the prior model. If you were to look at them side by side, I'd be hard pressed to find anyone who can distinguish them apart solely based off exterior appearances. It really is about what's on the inside that counts. But before we discuss the M2 chip, let's take a look at our array of I.O. ports. On the standard M2 model, you have your power button all the way to the left, followed by your port for your AC cable, your Ethernet port to hardwire your connection, and remember, you can upgrade this to 10 gigabit Ethernet for an additional $100. You also only get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which does differ from the M2 Pro model, which provides you with four Thunderbolt 4 ports. We do also feature an HDMI port, two USB Type A ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and underneath all of this, is an air vent so the machine can circulate the air inside for thermal cooling and pushes out that hot air away from the machine's chassis. And to help with airflow, like I mentioned earlier, the Mac Mini M2 can appear as though it's floating slightly above your desk thanks to the elevated base. So now let's briefly talk about performance since I'll be making a handful of dedicated performance tests comparing and contrasting this model with the prior M1, but also the more alluring M2 Pro model. So as always, stay tuned. But if we want to look at some raw benchmarks and get an idea of what we're dealing with, I ran some Geekbench tests to see what all is going on here with the brand new M2 Mac Mini. It scored an impressive 1925 on single core and a very respectable 8697 for multi-core, supporting Apple's claims that this chip is the most impressive computer chip they've ever released for the price. Seriously, the fact that this only comes in at 599 for the base model and provides this much power under the hood is actually pretty insane. And because this is a stationary desktop, there's little worry of overheating or thermal throttling, a big concern for laptops, specifically MacBooks, who already have very thin bodies and chassis. This computer is simply more than powerful enough for most individuals and only those who seriously need to squeeze out as much power as possible should look at the M2 Pro variant. However, there seems to be a major problem with the base 599 version, and that has to do with significantly slower read and write speeds off the internal base 256GB SSD. You'll definitely want to stay tuned for the head-to-head -head comparisons to test these claims and see whether they're true or not. For now, I'll leave performance test alone and save them all for their dedicated head-to-head -head performance comparison videos versus the M1 chip, as well as comparing it to the base M2 Pro model to see if those SSDs are in fact any different. For now, what you need to know is that the Mac Mini now stands as a serious contender within the PC realm. It's lightweight, extremely portable, and packs tremendous power under the hood. The best part about the Mac Mini is that you're not obligated to buy Apple's expensive accessories, and you can choose whatever monitor, mouse, or keyboard you please, so long as the compatibility is present. I've had plenty of years of experience with Mac Minis, and they're certainly not hard to recommend at all, especially right now. A lower price tag, a speedier chipset, and the same familiar chassis we've all grown to love over the years, so like what's not to like here? And now for the first time ever, we get the option to upgrade to Apple's more premium silicon, namely the M2 Pro for those demanding the most performance possible under the hood. This is a great starter Mac that won't break the bank, but if you do require even more power, you may want to look at something like the Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip, but that will certainly cost you thousands of more dollars than the base Mac Mini. If you already have an M1 Mac Mini, I would say hold off until Apple releases the M3 chip or whatever they decide to call it. Going from an N1 chip to the standard M2 chip is only a marginal increase. Unless you plan on upgrading to the M2 Pro, then the upgrade is a little bit more viable. But stay tuned for those performance tests to make a better, more informed decision. So as a recap, what's new here is a price reduction of 100 bucks off the base model, the implementation of the M2 chip, and now options to configure the Mac Mini with an M2 Pro chip, and things like upgrading to a massive 8 terabyte SSD. So that's been it guys, drop your thoughts down below. As always, that's been it for me. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and quick look at the Mac Mini with the M2 chip, and as always, take care, and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.